Hello, hello, hello everybody and welcome back to SE Aviation and today I'm going to show you a cockpit tour of this updated Sirius SF50. The cockpit is just amazing, so let me show you. First of all, so that like I have, um, so that like you have an overview, let me hold tap here the screen and show you all the knobs that you can touch. You can touch all of those and they are movable and they work. So let's just why no. Open the door. That's very cool. And now let me show you how the cockpit works. So first of all, let's battery on here so that we have electrical power and I can show you. So you have here mainly two screens. Uh, this one's called the primary flight display or the PFD. Fire. And this one, Fire. it's called the Fire. multifunctional Fire. flight Fire. display. Fire. So, MFT. Let's start with this one. Now, they both have things in common, but this one is the most like primary one that you will be using in flight. That's why it's called primary flight display. So, let me first show you the screen. So, the screen consists of the radios on the top and the navigation thing on the top, and on the bottom, basically, the maps and uh, information about the state of the aircraft currently. So, starting here, you have your active navigation frequencies. So, always what's on the right is the active. So, in this case, the active thing is 111.7 on the navigation 1 and 111.7 in the second nav radio. They are the same. How do you move them? By using this knob. So, you can't directly change the standby, the uh, active one, but you can change the standby one so we're going to go ahead and do that you with the with a single tap choose which one to change like this nav1 or nav2 and then let's change nav1 with one finger you change the decimals so let's say we want to tune 114.7 we go ahead and do this seven and then with two fingers like this we move the bigger ones 114 then we use the flip-flop to change it to the active one. Now let's change it again, 111.7. So that's more or less how the navigation works. It's very easy, it's very easy, sorry. And the same with the communications radio, it's exactly the same. So let's say I want to change COM2, so I do this, then I'm going to tune 1 to 1.8, I don't know, it's just an example, 1 to 1.8, like this, 6, 7, Eight, and then flip-flop and then the active come to is 1 to 1.8 however if you actually want to hear that you would like to go down here to the audio and radios and click come to and make so that you hear and come to and also transmit on come to but for now let's just leave it like it was come one in this case I would be hearing on 118.0 which is the active one for come one now here on the top these two things, you can see there's one upper and one in the bottom part. Now the upper, what you see in magenta, it's going to be your active navigation. So it's going to tell you the distance to your next waypoint and the bearing to it. Also, it's going to tell you which waypoint you're going to. In this case, it says direct to nothing. That D means a direct. But let's say we wanted to say right here direct to... Uh, let me just put a random waypoint, anything here. This one, direct to it, direct, activate. Look at what would you see here. Left turn to 263 now, we have to make the turn and then direct to that waypoint. So that's more or less how it works. That's going to be practical when you actually start setting up your flight plan. And in the other part right here, in the, it's, uh, the green thing indicates your active autopilot setting. In this case, there's just yaw damper, but we could make it work on uh, heading, on flight load change, and flight director, and see how it looks like now. Oops, sorry. It would be flight director, heading, and flight level change. Look at this. Now we have heading, flight director, yaw damper, and flight level change for 67 knots. And then what's that white thing? Is the standby one. It's the one that's at some point going to arm. 
So that's more or less um, what this thing shows. The heading, of course, works with heading. The approach um, makes you follow an ILS. The navigation makes you follow the GPS. The autopilot actually turns on the autopilot, autopilot. and turns it off. The flight directors are this, um, this magenta things that you can see, see in the PFD that tell you where to go. The level levels you both in roll and in pitch. The yaw damper basically controls the throttle, sorry, the rudder automatically. The flight level change makes you climb or descend at a specific airspeed without losing or gaining airspeed, but trying to descend or climb as much as you can without sacrificing airspeed. The BNF makes you follow the vertical path, which is controlled with uh, this part of the series. And last but not least, the vertical speed makes you all fly in just a vertical speed, which can be from zero feet per minute to plus, uh, you know, plus 2,100, plus 3,000, plus 4,000, plus 5,000, and minus works exactly the same way. And then you have the altitude, altitude, which makes you level off. So in this case, we have just level off at 14 feet, which is uh, does not make uh, sense, but it's okay. Now, continuing here on the PFD, we have on the left part our airspeed indicator. That's our indicated airspeed. But in the bottom part, you have the true airspeed. In this case, you're not showing anything, but it's okay. On the right part, however, you have your altitude. So this is your actual altitude here. We are between 0, 0 and 20 feet, probably 14. Then in the bottom, you can see that 2,999 or 2 is the altimeter setting. Now, depending on that altimeter setting, the altimeter reading is going to change. For example, if I change the altimeter to 3021, you can see it now it says I'm, I am at 200 feet. Well, if I click it to standard, it says I am at zero feet. And on the top, you have your selected autopilot altitude, which is in this case is uh, zero feet. But with this button right here, you can change it. You can see it says 2300, 3400 or 500. Now moving right here, you have your vertical speed. That's the number it shows times 100. So if it's one, it's 100. Two is 200. Sorry, sorry, forget that. The one, it's times 1,000. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, or 4,000. Now right here for the primary thing, you have your degrees of level in pitch 10. It's, well logically enough, shown, the middle is 5, and the middle ones are, well, 7.5 and 2.5. And for the roll, you have first 10, then 20, then 30, then 45, and then 60. Now, the little triangle shows you the, the exact position where you are, and the little bar that's below the triangle indicates if you're skidding or slipping, which is basically when you're not flying with aileron and rudder coordination. Now, fun fact, if you always have the yaw damper option of the autopilot on, even if the autopilot's not on, you will never see that happen because the yaw damper coordinates your flight controls. Now, moving down, you have your selected heading. In this case, it's in blue. You can select it with this knob right here. Now, with the white right here, you see your actual heading, magnetic heading. In this case, it's 133 degrees. And then you have your selected course, which is 266. Now, you may ask, why is the course in that kind of purple and the heading in blue? Well, it's easy. Your heading is your selected heading. But the course is selected by the autopilot. That's why you can't move it. If we change this to localizer, you can see it's now green, which means you can change it with this curse. That's how it works. But when it's on GPS, you can change it because the GPS gives you a, a course to fly on, a, on an airway or a fix or a VOR, but not, you cannot change it. Well, if you're directly flying to the VOR, you can change it. Now, as you saw now, right here, this is the, your VOR 1 or your VOR 2. 
or your GPS and route diagram. Now it basically shows a compass with all the radials coming out, all the degrees, but you will get more familiarized with this when you use it. Now moving here to the left, you see a map which can be changed with this range thing. You can see the range is just 2000 feet, while here the range is 800 nautical miles. That's crazy. And you can see airspace here airspace is here. In this case, that uh, strange thing that you can see is the Bravo airspace of this airport. Moving down, you have the outside air temperature of 15 degrees, then the international standard atmosphere deviation. In this case, it's zero degrees, so it's just like the international standard atmosphere. Now, just fun fact, the international standard atmosphere basically tells you that at sea level, in the equator, the temperature is always going to be 15 degrees with a pressure of 2, 9 or 9 or 2 inches of mercury. Now, if for some reason you are at sea level and the temperature is not that and the pressure is not that, then you are not on the standard atmosphere. Now, in this case, x does not simulate that, so you will always see the standard atmosphere deviation as zero. And on the right, you have your transponder with the code and with the actual state. So in this case it's code 1200 and the state is off. And then you have your local time which is uh, 8 and 15 and 30, 40 seconds local time. Now you may ask what is all those things that I can see below? Well those are controlled with the soft keys. So let me show you. Moving from the left you have this inset. It tells you what you want to see. Traffic, topography, terrain, or weather, which is the next thread. Now, x does not simulate any of those things, so you don't care about that. However, if you want to be fully realistic, then put traffic, topography, terrain, and next thread. But x does not simulate that. Now, the off tells you, I don't want to see anything, but well, we don't want to see, we actually want to see something. And the declutter one or two takes information out of the map until you only see your route. Now you can see uh, here's the airspaces and here X airports. Now the airspace, the airspace is gone, as you can see. So we're gonna leave it on nothing. Back, now you have your PFD. You can see the defaults here. You have defaults, but this does not work in the simulator. However, you can change the wind for an option one, option two, or option three. I like the option three. So I'm going to leave it like that, or you can leave it in off, but let's leave it in option three. Let's go back. DME basically tells you uh, the distance measuring equipment and which navigation do you want it to follow. So in this case, it's telling me the distance to the NAV one I have selected, which in this case is 1.2 nautical miles to the localizer sender, but I can change that if I want it. Uh, with this little button right here that says DME to change for navigation one or navigation two or the holding, but in this case, I'm gonna leave it to navigation one, clear. Perfect, so that was uh, PFD DME. Now this is your bearing one. In this case, we're selecting the localizer and your bearing two, we have also selected the localizer, but we could have selected another thing. For example, let's select the VOR here, here and this other VOR right here. Now you can see we have NAV2 and NAV1 and they are showing us that the VR1 is selected with that strange arrow in the map while the VR2 is with, it's being uh, selected with another type of arrow. We are 0 0.6 nautical miles from them and 12.6 from the other one. And you have of course the code. In this case it's Charlie Kilo Hotel CKH or for the other one Hotel November Lima or AHNL which fun fact is the Honolulu VR. So that was the bearings. Now the altitude unit, you can change it to inches of mercury or hectopascals, as you can see it's changing. Uh, I recommend inches of mercury in the United States and hectopascals outside the United States because the rest of the world uses hectopascals while the United States still uses inches of mercury. Let's go back right here. Standard barometric pressures tell you to set the altimeter to standard or manually. Let's go back, moving on. We have the OVS. It basically tells you what to show right here. Uh, we're gonna leave it on um, OBS like this so that we can change 
some things like the course. Remember a second ago I told you you couldn't change the course? Well, it's because in the GPS it doesn't matter what course you change. But since here we are working with uh, another type of en route things, we really want to work with the, with the uh, course selectors like this. In this case we're centered for the route. It tells you that if you were to have this heading you would be off course. This is very useful for the VOR. As you can see, this is the radial you're on when it's centered. So when the needle centers, you can see you're on the two, one, uh, or so two, one, one, two, one, two radial or something. Perfect. So we were here in, uh, no, we already passed PFD. I was showing you the CDI. Oh, the OBS. So that's the OBS. It stands for Omni bearing selector. Moving on, you have the CDI. You can select it for the VOR1, VOR2, or the GPS. Now, if you instead of selecting a VOR, select a localizer, it would instead say localizer1, VOR2, or GPS and root. Now, moving on, you have the DME, which I already showed. Moving on, you have the transponder, in which you can select the code. You can select it to be on standby, you can select it to be on, which basically reports your position but not your altitude. You can select it to report altitude, you can select the BFR code, and you can identify. So let me show you each of them. Standby puts the transponder on the standby position. On puts it on on so it reports. And altitude, it's the best one because it shows the traffic controllers the altitude. For the BFR, it will be automatically put on 1200, which is already, which is the BFR code. And uh, for the code, it opens this number, so let's say ATC tells you squawk 5467, you squawk 5467, and that's it. And last you have the ident, which makes the your, your aircraft like little picture in the controller's radar pop up and show so that the controller says, oh, this aircraft's like trying to get my attention. Last, you have the timer reference, so you can set a timer start it or stop it you see your glide speeds but this thing does not simulate that and you have your barometric minimums which you can set to 1000 or something or anything the minimums is an altitude at which you want to have visual contact with the runway that's all it is to the minimums that's indicated on the approach charts reset yes reset perfect then you have your nearest, which tells you the nearest airport with the longest runway and the tower frequency. So let's say we lose both engines, we open this, and it says your nearest airport is Honolulu at a heading of 017, three nautical miles with an ILS approach. The tower frequency is 123.9, and the longest runway is 12,273 feet. You also have another airport called uh, NPS, if you turn to a heading of 314, you will find it. It's a distance of 3.7 nautical miles. It's a BFR airport, so it has BFR approach. And the longest runway is just 3,878 feet. Well, you have another airport here, and it gives you also the heading and the runway length and the distance. It's a very, very good tool. However, if you keep going, you can see more. All the nearest airports. And if you actually select it, like I'm going to do right now, you are now going direct to that airport. Perfect. Now that's what's the nearest. Now you have your caution or your alerts. So for example, if you were to enter a restricted airspace, the alerts would appear. Another type of alert could be uh, cabin pressure low or things like that. So that's what the PFD does. You have here your NAF audio ID so you can see here you have your arrows, but you can also have the ID which makes you listen to what to what the station Morse code is transmitting so that you identify it. Here I already show you the knobs. This is the heading selector, altitude selector. This is your ID for COM1. I already showed you this. With this you change your curse. Perfect. With this, you change the range of the map, like this. And this is a shortcut 
for what I'm going to show you now. All those things. There are shortcuts for the other part, which is this Garmin. So this Garmin shows you the same right here as I told you, top right and top left, also the navigation thing. And this tells you which is your active flight plan. So in this case, it's active. Now you can see here engine indications and one exhaust gas temperature and two differential pressure, altitude in feet, flowing gallons per hour, oil pressure, oil temperature in uh, degrees centigrade, amperes, volts, fuel quantity and aileron and rudder. But you can also change it to show you your fuel flowing gallons per hour, pressure, quantity of your left can, quantity of your right tank in gallons, fuel totalizer says gallons remaining and gallons used, and your generator A, what's producing, your alternate generator A, in amperes, that A means in amperes, your bus one in volts and your bus two in volts, you have here your flap indicator, your elevator indicator, which in this case is full up, Autopilot. but see that as I do this, it changes, this is the appropriate takeoff setting. Now moving on, you have here all your flight plan with the Garmin. Now you can do a lot, lots of things with this, but I'm just gonna show you very shortly how to work with it. So you change the airport like this with two fingers and you start selecting your, selecting your waypoints. With this, thing you can click direct to affix with this thing you can say activate leg store flight plan invert flight plan delete flight plan collapse airways delete approach or create an offset waypoint you can here start selecting your flight plan with this you select your procedure so the approach arrival and departure you can activate your vector to final activate your approach and activate your missed approach now you're asking, why is this in gray? Because we haven't selected an arrival airport. Without an arrival airport, you cannot select a vector to final. You cannot select an approach if you haven't selected the airport. We have only selected the departure airport. So that's what you only see, select the approach, select arrival, select departure. And here in the bottom, you see what has been actually loaded. So the approach has not been loaded, the arrival has not been loaded, and the departure has not been loaded. Moving here, you have the clear button, which only works when you want to clear something. Moving on, you have the enter, which is very important. And right here, as you can see with the waypoints, you have your track, distance, and altitude. So in this case, we're 7.1 from the Hotel November NDB, which is this one. Now on the bottom you have your current BNF profile will tell you, which tells you your active BNF waypoint which basically says I want to be at some kind of feed at that waypoint. It tells you your vertical speed target in feet per minute, your vertical speed required in feet per minute, your flight path angle in degrees and your time to top of descent or time to bottom of descent and finally your vertical speed deviation in feet. Now, if you click this with only one finger and you move right, you're going to start selecting your next waypoint. But if you lock the cursor like this and then you move it, it will be changed to the flight plan list, the saved flight plan list. In this case, I have only saved one. Let me load it like this, enter. And now look at the flight plan. I have entered all of it by itself because I had already done it. Look at this. It's very cool. And so those are all the waypoints of your route. That's more or less how it works. But in a later video, which you can see right here, you can see how actually to work out with this uh, Garmin, how to actually create a flight plan and flight. Now, for the buttons you have here, the dis fuel, ins fuel, and reset fuel, they don't work, so don't care about that. However, you have a map in which you can select what to see. As I told you, this thing does not work, but the airways work. So you can select you for, see, for seeing airways, low airways, or high airways. Weather, of course, does not work. Now, for your view, you can select a wide view or a narrow view. 
and a leg leg, so leg and then another leg, are the cum, which tells you the distance, the accumulated distance. That way, that's what cum stands for in that context. Back, then you have your cancel VNF or enable VNF, but in this case, we haven't selected the vertical profile, so that's not gonna work. Then you have the AT key offset, which does not work in this, and the active flag, which also does not work. Remember, this is only, okay, let me just cancel this. This is only in this specific uh, simulator that, it's, that it does not work. Of course, in real life, all of these patterns have to do something. Makes sense, right? These things do not. Well, just those little buttons. Now, this, the panel, you also have your comms, your curves, your range, right here, can be as long as this. Look at such high amount of airways. Now, moving down, you have your buttons right here, which tell you the battery one, battery two, the generator, generator two, strobe lights, landing lights, navigation lights, oxygen, bleed air, which is very important for pressurization, period and angle of attack, probes heat, engine inlet heat, wing and surfaces heat, window heat, custom slider 23, which to be honest, I don't know what it is and I haven't been able to find what that is, and custom slider 22. Those are the tests, again. Now, here you have your status inf, so it tells you the door is open, let me close it. Where do you close the door? From here. And it now says door closed, perfect. It tells you the gear is down and the brakes are on. You can see here how the brakes now say they're off. This is on. Then you have the environmental pressure, cabin altitude. Now look at this, if I put the oxygen masks on, like I have just, it says barb open. Hear that, those are great sounds. However, I can again close the oxygen, but that was cool. Now, you have here your environment, which shows your cabin altitude, cabin uh, vertical speed in feet per minute, how fast the cabin is climbing, the bleeder valve it, with this radio ratio. Now, currently the engines are not running, so that's not gonna work. Moving right here, you have your engine and fuel, it tells you how many kilograms of fuel there are in each tank. Fuel pumps, if they are working, now they are not because the engine is not running. The fuel pressure in PSI and the shutoff bulb, which in this case is of course off. Then you have your electrical, will tell you a little diagram of how the aircraft is doing. In this case, both generators are off because the engines are not running. The battery is working, but it's discharging, as you can see. And last, the weight and balance, which tells you if you are weight and balance. Ah, well, makes sense. Now, let me just do something real quick. Let me overweight and misbalance this. You can see how now the little diamond is outside that envelope. It means that's very dangerous to take off like that. But if we again uh, select an appropriate weight and balance like this, we are still, oh, now we are inside the envelope. Perfect, moving on, you have your audios and radios. It told you what you want to receive. So if you click on F1, F2, you can hear them. That's the Morse code of the station. You can also hear the ADF and the ADF2, but we are not selecting any of those. Now, if you're wondering, ADF means Automatic Direction Finder, which works with NDBs. The distance measuring equipment also has a Morse code uh, identificator and the marker for an ILS also have. Then you have test all annunciators, like this. And of course you have the cabin brightness. And this air conditioning fan, which you can see how it starts sounding. And see how it uses amps. See this? Now see this. It changes, <laughs> it's very curious. Now this is your autopilot panel. With this you select your heading. That button makes exactly the same thing that this one. They both make the same. Just like this one and this one. 
This is for selecting the speed in the flight level change option to go up or down, look at the PFD, look at the PFD, or in the vertical speed, it will do this. This is your altitude, altitude. flight level change, BNF, vertical speed, levels, which levels you in both the roll and pitch axis, yaw damper, flight director, navigation, heading, and approach mode. And of course, the autopilot Auto engage pilot. and disengage option. This is your flaps, so flap zero, and flaps full, and your throttle, your trim wheel for the elevator, and your fuel tank selector, which in this case is for automatic. Now on the overhead panel, you have very little things. You have your, your engine fire suppression safeguard. Now, if you click this, which I have just done, it shuts down the engine and extinguish the, extinguishes the fire if there is some. So you really don't want to do this in flight because if you do, the engine's gonna shut down. Because of course, the system takes fuel out of it because if you have fuel, well, the fire could get worse. So you should not do that. Now this dump thing dumps the cabin pressure, which you should also never use if you're very high because it will immediately make you need these masks, which are the other switches that I wanted to show you that activate these very cool sounds. And the last switch, I'm gonna tell you that's something very cool but I'm not gonna show it to you until the end of the video. Then you have the cabin lights here, which we can control, and of course the door, which is very cool. Now, let me show you the last switch. Let's put ourselves here in the ILS approach. So here, uh, take a look at the indications. Here is our airspeed. Here. Some alarms. Here. Let's take that and gear down. Here. Now, if you are wondering what this magenta thing that appears in the airspeed indicator means, look at this. See how that little bar increases? It that thing tells you how fast your airspeed is increasing. Look, if I make my airspeed increase, the magenta bar moves very up. Now, if I do this and I decrease my airspeed, the magenta bar goes down. Now also in the PFD you have these arrows, you have some alarms that tell you that you are too, no, too low nose attitude, like this, and the arrows in the PFD tell you to pull up, like that. Now see how curious it is, when you are on very unusual attitudes like this, all those maps disappear so that you concentrate on lowering the nose that's what your plane cares about you lowering the nose because that's a very unusual altitude here's its caution now last thing you want to see that the series shows you uh, is the engine shutdown right here which you can shut down the engine now you should never do this in flight and the last very last switch I forgot the landing gear. Here you have gear up, gear down, and this thing which duplicates the PFD. But last is the parachute. You just click this. Stall. And you have basically been ejected. And you can't recover from Stall. the from this. The airplane's automatically gonna go down. When this happens, the system puts the airplane in a position in which it's going to make it stall and make it fall out of the sky, literally, until it crashes. Thank you very much for your time and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.